You never relax because there's, um, you're expected to get results and you're expected to implement the philosophy that you're, that you're learning and that, uh, that is part of this big network. Because yeah, you have pressure from games, but this was very intense all the time. Not just on the result of the game, but of your training sessions, of how you conduct yourself, how your coaching staff and around you, how that team is functioning. All of this stuff is being analyzed and critiqued and discussed. But once you get out of that, you, you really appreciate the knowledge base and how much you've advanced through that whole experience. Welcome to the home of Genoa CFC, Italy's oldest football club founded way back in 1893. This place was initially an athletics and cricket club in its earlier years. Fast forward over a century, this venue is now home to an Australian. Thank you for having me here at this beautiful club. You're welcome. Tell me a bit about this place. Mate, it's the oldest club in, uh, in Italy. It's uh, just got so much history about it. You'll see from, from the building that we work out of. It's just a historical building. It fits in with the club and the atmosphere of the club, the history of the club. But the fact that you see the title is Genoa Cricket and Football Club, that was like, for me, I'm like, is this a sign or something? <laughs> because you know, Aussies love their cricket. And your story is an incredible one, the journey to this club. Tell me a bit about that and how did you arrive here at Genoa? So you know my history as a player, then started coaching and also doing TV work. So from that, um, I made the jump, the big jump, to go to Germany and, and work at uh, Red Bull Leipzig. My old coach, uh, Ralph Rannick, was the one that developed the whole Red Bull system and the structure of all the clubs. Uh, and then working with him in the academy, I was able to learn the whole philosophy, everything about coaching, everything about what goes behind it, the whole structures of scouting, it's just everything. It was just like a crash course, a university course in footballing, but also that philosophy. And then from there, the new owners employed a sport director who was also from Leipzig, and then that philosophy is, is then brought here. You've worked and lived in some different parts of the world, some different countries. Can you share with me some of the the different lessons you've learned in various parts of the world? I think the biggest lesson for me, um, or lessons, was when I went to Leipzig because that was just a totally different experience in terms of the football being played, the philosophy, the structure of the club, uh, which was the pinnacle in a, in a network of clubs. So not only developing players and the philosophy of the players, but also developing coaches and the philosophy of the coaches because you can see many coaches have come through that network who are now working at big, big clubs. So Ralph Rannick was that influence. His style of play was the way I played. Obviously that's why he recruited me as a player and then as a coach. So um, the amount of learning that, that I was able to do in those, those three seasons at Leipzig was just unbelievable. Not something you could compare to experiences or opportunities in Australia? No, because look, Australia, I think we're very innovative and we have to be but we don't have access to that kind of a culture and experience. Firstly, uh, the European leagues are just, just the intensity of the amount of money, the market and all that. We don't have that in Australia. You have to feel it, you have to learn it, the pressures, uh, the cultures, and that just turns you into a different person and different coach. You live here now, but the transition to get here, player, media, yeah. coach, walk me through that. The easiest way to sum it up is in my life is that Whatever I sort of planned never went that way, but I always ended up in where I think I belonged. So coming here now, it's a, it's a beautiful place, a lot of history, and it's just another, another chapter in my story as well. Italy, yeah. new country, new culture, new yeah. cuisine, new language, how yeah. have you found it? I've been to many places, so I'm able to adapt and, and, and just take it as it is. I've got a family with me now, which is a little bit more interesting because when I'm alone, I can just, you know, I can just, come and go and, uh, and everything's a lot more easier when I'm just thinking about myself. But uh, generally the passion of the fans, the actual uh, club and working here in the environment has been excellent. Um, sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and you know, can't believe I'm actually here. Women's World Cup coming next yeah. year. How important do you think a showpiece tournament like this will be back home on home soil? It's important, but it also shows that Australia was one of the uh, forerunners in promoting women's uh, sport, women's football. And I think the world has followed the example of the likes of Australia, maybe the, the US. So us having the World Cup at home, um, I think is that a uh, stamp of approval shows that you know what we've invested in the game that we can also showcase Australia um, women's football football in general I think uh, our team and everybody will do us proud 
um, and it's something that should be savoured by all Australians. You've promised me a Genovese lunch. We need to make our way over there, but this has been an amazing day. I hope you like pesto. Hey, I love <laughs> pesto with David. A lot of fun today. Keep smashing Thanks, it. Mate. All Thanks the for coming. Best. There you go, mate. Pesto Genovese. Gra Enjoy. Grazie. Buon appetito. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.